Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Mythgard in Middle-Earth. Uh, my name is Corey Olson, the Tolkien Professor, joined, as always, by my friend Grifflet, who's been hanging out here in Standgard, chatting with Horn. You know, uh, uh, has a sinking feeling he's going to need to get to know Horn a little bit better, so, you know, he's been kind of hanging out here. Uh, not really seeing why Horn seems, seems to be, um, you know, kind of an outsider here in Standgard, so he's been trying to figure that out. Um, but hey, everybody. Um, <clears throat> uh, welcome. So today I'm going to do something a little bit different because I I've had some special requests. Uh, uh, I've been uh, told that Grifflet really needs to do the bingo boffin line uh, in the Harvest Festival, the Fall Festival. Um, so, you know, I often take advice. Uh, so I think we're going to do that. We're going to go to the Fall Festival. Now, a disclaimer. I, I'm not a festival kind of person. Mostly this is just, it's not because of disliking festivals or thinking them frivolous or something like that. However, uh, my problem really is that I only have like, you know, 1% as much time to play Lotro as I, you know, would love to have. Uh, so, I never want to, like, take my time that I have playing Lotro going to festivals. I'm like, there's still so much, like, quest material I haven't done yet and haven't seen yet, you know? So um, I'm always, I always want to spend as much time as I have, you know, going through and exploring the primary game areas and things. So for that reason, I've never really gotten around to festivals. I have done them, but I think I've probably, over all of my alts combined, I think I've been inside a festival ground maybe five times uh, in my entire career. So I'm really clueless when it comes to festivals. Uh, so just um, uh, just just uh, just to let you know that I have no idea where I'm going or what I'm doing. But anyway, that said, Grifflet is going to head off to the Fall Festival uh, because, again, you guys tell me it's awesome and I believe you implicitly. So let's do that. Okay, so I think this gives me a map, yeah? All right. Off we go. What do I get? Instructions? Oh, oh, good. Instructions. Oh, hang on. I, I, I want to read the instructions. I didn't know the festival came with an instruction manual. Argue why I should have read the instruction manual before I traveled. I didn't even realize that was there. I was just looking for the map. Okay, wait. Oh, wait, maybe we should try this again. I think I think we confused it. Okay. As summer draws to a close, the final crops of the year's harvest are ripe for enjoyment. <clears throat> Excellent. Harvest math. Hooray! Fall is considered by many to be the greatest of seasons. I love fall myself. Okay. So we've got the party tree, which is where we appear to be. Breeland. Thorns Hall. Erdluen. Okay, is it like... Are there different things in each of these, or? Okay, the Haunted Barrow, oh, good grief. <clears throat> I did try the Haunted Barrow once. Um, that did not go well. It's, it seems, okay, right, the Festival Run. Okay. Oh, the Horse Field, oh, like races and things. Yes, okay. Yeah, all right, um, and, <laughs> all right, sorry. So I'm getting, like, flashbacks from some of the few times I have done festivals. Okay, uh, uh, and uh, Bob for Apples, pick pumpkins, collect geodes, right? And scry, sc scry scrolls. A deceptively tricky phrase to pronounce. Um, perform tricks and collect tokens. Uh, okay. See, this is the kind of stuff that I don't understand and I'm always completely at sea about, but that's all right. Um, okay. All right. Uh... So I okay. Did I do the bingo quest last year? I think I did some of it, but I did not get to completely finish it. I think. Um, so it was. Uh, I know that Wigand has a cosmetic bill, the pony, uh, as well as a cosmetic grip, as well as I think a cosmetic rowark. Did I get those from that? Is that where I got them? Is that the? I think. I have. A, I think that's where I got them. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Well, here's Baldo Mudfoot. Okay, 
I, I'm just I'm just kind of exploring here. Let's let's see. Maybe Griffith should stealth himself. I don't know. Okay, let's see. So we've got the a stage. Hmm. With little uh, these things are these dangly things are quests, right? Uh, okay, right. All of them are. How intimidating. Okay, so people get up on stage, and then what do they do? She dances. Okay, she's dancing. Does she get points for that? Is that a thing you have to do? Oh, she's breathing fire. I see. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, oh, there's Bingo. I see Bingo Buffin. Okay. Oh, he's hammering something. I was... <clears throat> okay, I couldn't see the hammer from the other side. It just kind of looked like he was reaching out and fondling the post, and I wasn't going to ask any questions. Okay, hang on. I, I see Bingo over there, but we'll, we'll come back to it. I just want to kind of look around here a little bit. I have to say, I do appreciate the uh, use of the party tree, right, and the hanging of lanterns and things from the party tree, and and all the bunting and everything. Uh, it, it's really kind of lovely to see the party tree in its full glory uh, as the center of the party grounds here, um, which will make the scouring of the Shire even more moving, right? When we finally get it, which I know we will. Okay, Waldo Rumble. Uh, Waldo, <clears throat> are you a relation of the Widow Rumble? I bet you are. Okay. Let's see. What do we have over here? Oh, the in league. Oh, oh goodness. Yes. Okay. I know. Of, I know a little bit about that too. All right. We've got lots of food, including a great number of pumpkins and meat and berries. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. A traveling farmer. Now there is a phrase you don't often see. What does the traveling farmer do? Woman who works a traveling farm? Traveling mushroom farm. Aha! <clears throat> well, that makes a little bit more sense. Okay. All right. Oh, man. Are you guys telling me I'm going to have to do the haunted burrow? <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, is this bobbing? Is this where one bobs? All right, how, how does one bob for apples? I'm bobbing. We're bobbing. Okay, I just... I, I got an apple. What does one do with the apples for which one bobs? Hey, Bathed in Fire is a pretty awesome title, I gotta say. I haven't seen that one. That's a good title. Okay, and this is where, where the dancing is going on. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Shouldn't y'all be up on the tables, or are we not that advanced in the celebrations yet? Okay. Aha, yeah, somebody passed out by the beer barrel. <clears throat> this looks more like a party. Big sacks of taters. Some uh, pretty intense uh, war steed gear right there. Okay. Okay, bingo. What do you got here? A delightfully spooky season. Okay, bingo. Frightful tales to curl the hair on your toes. Okay, let's see. You see that I've taken some time from my busy days of adventuring to celebrate the Harvest Festival. Yeah, I thought I would. I was kind of at a stopping point anyway there in Stangard, so. Uh, okay, this has become one of your very favorite times of the year. Oh, good. Your cousin Prisca has brought her child children to visit. Okay. Oh, right. Prisca Brandybuck with the all of the children. I remember her. Okay, we're going to enjoy the sights and sounds. I must join this. You won't take no for an answer. Okay, bingo. No problem. I can find your various cousins enjoying the games around the party tree. Help them make the most of their time here. Ooh. 
Ooh. Oh, you want me to help people with lots of other quests? Uh, hang on. So, I should do these? Okay, I'll do these. Again, I'm just taking your guys' word for it. You guys tell me what to do, and I'll do it. Um, should I start with the second one? Do part two. Okay, all right. Well, I'll accept this one, and then we'll do part two. The Curse of Eerie Acres. Recommended, though not required, that I complete the others. Am I going to have time to complete the others? Those sounded like a lot, but okay. It is a lot. It is a lot? Yeah? Am I going to have time to do that in like an hour? Not both of them, no. Okay, so I should do number two? Ignore uh, in a manner of speaking, yes. Ignoring the green print recommendation of... Uh... Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. You did the other one last year. Did I? I think I might not have wholly finished yes, it. Yes, you did. Did I? Really? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, see, this is the one of the things about, like, you know, getting older and losing one's memory is that, like, all these things are ever new every year. Um, okay. Don't talk to me about getting older. I got older yesterday. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, congratulations. And officially, for the record, get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a running gag I have with Cordova and on the other hand he can tell you to get off his lawn too true well okay anyway sorry where has the time gone it feels we were just discussing the strange apparition I, oh, I saw there was an apparition in Vinebowl Wood hmm okay but, uh, but the year of which it spoke has already come and gone. Okay. I fully intend to spend the time researching the Phantom's words. Okay, hang on a second. I don't know the backstory here. Is this, so this is what I would have uh, gotten to if uh, I had completed the other ones? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to give me a briefing then if I'm skipping, the, if I'm skipping those. Which um, it would be we, awful we sad to do all the setup quests and not get time to do the main ones. So I just need a briefing. Um, the short version is we met a, a spectral vision who warned us that there was a curse upon the Shire. Curse upon the Shire. Uh, curse upon the Shire. And that bad things were going to happen this year relating to the Eerie Acres. But we didn't know what the Eerie Acres was. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. This Remember year. we were telling everybody scary stories about uh, shoes that wouldn't come off and someone dancing and murder and mayhem and people getting stuck in their larder or... The Six Myrtle Court being a haunted house in the Hobbit uh, housing instance. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So the Eerie Acres is specifically the uh, the key element there, right? Indeed. That was the, the hook. Okay. All right. Uh, so those are the words. The... Phantom's words, which uh, uh, Bingo was intending to research, right? Uh huh. Okay, great. Um, but okay, to, right? Chores and errands and visits, and all right. Okay, no closer. All right, let's see. What did the apparition say? Oh, you wrote it down. Excellent. There can be no reparations for the hurt that has been done. In one year, all will fear the parting of the wood. The parting of the wood, really. None will escape the curse of the eerie acres. Despair and repair to your holes. Oh, that's 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 lovely. I like that. Despair and repair to your holes. For none but one will laugh when all is done. Okay. Let me read it again. There can be no reparation for the hurt that has been done. In one year, all will fear the parting of the wood. None will escape the curse of the eerie acres. Despair and repair to your holes, for none but one will laugh when all is done. Okay, so assonance is the theme of the spectral declaration, right? I got it. I got it. In one year, all will fear... Uh, yeah, despair and repair, none, one, done. Got it. Still gives you the chills. I know. That's pretty chilling, Bingo. That assonance really, really hits you near home, right? Those, 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 that internal rhyme gets you every time. 
But we will not forget those, those words. And I recommend that you keep your eyes open as we participate in the Harvest Festival this year. I, I absolutely. If I see anything at all that seems to relate to this curse, come to see you at once. Wallerick Goldworthy, what an interesting name, has opened a new field of festival games for the Harvest Festival this year at a place called Wistmead. Ah, okay. We should go to Wistmead and have some fun, but keep on the lookout. A pony to Wistmead. Uh, east and up the slope. Okay. All right. Wistmead. East and up the slope, huh? Follow the happy hunter. Oh, wait. I just missed it. <laughs> I just ran past it. A little... A little uh, less far east than I was thinking there. Oh, what an eerie pony. Yep, that's last year's uh, Harvest Math uh, Festival mount. Got it. Got it. Whoa. I, I can't see anything. Where am I? What's going Sorry, on? you pointed right in on top of me. Aha. Okay. It was your costume I was inside of. Okay. That's not creepy or anything. No, not at all. So this is new for this year, Wisp Mead. Um, uh, if you look up at the sky, it's very, very spooky. I, I was so sad that, well, I was happy they used the, the scary sky from last year's bingo quest for this. It's great. Oh, nice. The moon is a lovely effect. A full moon peeking out from among the clouds. That's very good. Oh, there's Fosco Boffin over there. Fosco Boffin, friend of Frodo. Okay. Well, this place looks less festive. So there's a lot of uh, side quests here. Okay. But let's not get tangled up in those because those are just your typical festival quests, but they're new for this year. Okay. Um, so I would just suggest focusing on the quests that start with the two, uh, the Roman numeral two, and those will get uh, where we need to go. Okay. All right. Fun and games. All right. He's done quite a nice job of creating a spooky atmosphere. Right? I agree. This is where we should have told our scary stories in the first place. Can you imagine what Dinidas might have done if we tried scaring him here in, instead? Right. Okay, I encourage you to find your various cousins and see what they think of the games. But do not forget to remain alert for suspicious activities. All right, I'll ch watch for apparitions. What did the apparition look like, exactly? Um, your average fell spirit. Uh, no feet, two arms, and, you know, glowing eyes. Okay, got it. Right. That's good. Okay. Um, try to have fun anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Angelica Boffin and Baralak Boffin. Okay. All right. Well, there's Foss. Six. Ooh. Oh, there's what Griffo and Camellia over there. You'll come visit them in a few. Okay, Barowak. Okay, you came with your brothers and sisters to Wistmead, but you're quite ready to leave. You were promised Harvest Festival fun, but this does not seem terribly enjoyable to me. All I want to do is curl up here outside of this maze and take a restful nap, but you've been not been able to get comfortable. Something about this place that keeps you awake, and that is most unusual. <laughs> okay. Um, you wish you could take a nap. Okay. Hey, it's Wallerick Goldworthy himself, but I'm supposed to be not distracted by that. Uh, we, where's we got to find Angelica? Okay. Yep. So she was over by the ponies. Over what here, is, skeleton this is, ponies. This is the entrance to the maze. Okay. You will not go through the maze today. Okay, that's not a 
terrible. If you thought the uh, the the spring maze in Bree was bad, this is worse <laughs> because there's different. There's five different versions of the maze, depending which day it is. Aha. Uh -huh. Cool. Okay. Uh, those ponies are totally delightful, Angelica. You understand that Carl Proudfoot has loaned them to Wallerick Goldworthy for the duration of the Harvest Festival. Okay. Uh, you're having a lovely time. Oh, great. Everything scary has been on purpose. Okay. Um, Cousin Bingo's curse must have nothing to do with this place after all. Everything seems fine to you. Okay. Angelica's happy. Baralak is not. Okay. Uh, now, Camellia Boffin. I saw her. She was over this way. I assume we have to talk to them all like in roughly alphabetical order, yeah? I didn't realize it was alphabetical, but I guess so. Okay. Welcome to Wistmead. Right, you spoke with Wallerick earlier. Took quite a long time to clear this field and prepare it for the Harvest Festival activities. Okay, right. Spookiest place in the Shire. Turn out there's still some baked goods waiting to be set on those tables. Pick up uh, one of Holly's pies from the tents on the other side of the field. The pie filling has been fashioned with blackberries and currants and should be delicious, but Holly Hornblower has made it look as if the pies are filled with creepy crawlies and spiders. A number of hungry hobbits may try to get in your way. Oh, dear. Not the hungry hobbits. I'm getting flashbacks now. Uh, but give them a good <laughs> look at the pie, and they will surely leave you alone. Okay, so you're supposed to not avoid the hungry hobbits. Yeah, you're supposed to scare them, run past them and scare them away. Okay. All right. Well, that's actually kind of satisfying. Revenge on the Hungry Hobbits. All right, so here we've got some pies. Where am I supposed to take them? Back over to the tables where we were just at. Oh, by Camilla? Yep. All right. I think that was made of lions, giving us all kinds of grief for... Um, that Shire pie quest with Holly Hornblower and the rancid pies. Right. Hey there, hungry hobbit. Want some pie? <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Griffo eyes it with distaste, huh? Oh, you're mistaken. Oh, oh, dear. I wanted nothing more than to dig into one of these pies. On closer inspection, you can plainly see that the pies are filled with spiders. On a front to good taste. <laughs> I don't understand why folks still buy pies from Holly Hornblower. Yeah. Okay. I certainly do catch the reference there. Okay. You're just so hungry and you don't like that feeling. Oh, so you're hungry and... and, and, and uh, what's his name? Bursalak? No, it's not Bursalak. Bert. Bert. Where? It's right over there. Baralak. Okay, the one who is almost named after the Green Knight, but not quite. Uh, sorry, he can't sleep and you can't eat. This is a big problem. Okay. Um, Marigold is probably enjoying herself because it's a little dark and scary. Right, she's the adventurous one. <laughs> okay I need to ask the devs because there is I believe an in-joke with Marigold I very much suspect there is okay let's see so many people there's Marigold okay a fog-enshrouded path on the edge of the Wistmead. Great. Okay, how am I finding Wistmead? You're very curious to know where this path leads. The fog hangs thickly about the trail, and the darkness seems almost to pool among the trees. It feels like adventure. Okay. 
Cousin Mingo made me promise to stay in Wistmead, or he would tell my mother and she would be very cross. So for now, I should not follow this misty path. I should walk along the path and see where it leads. Hey, that sounds great. Now, here's the in-joke that I believe uh, exists with her. Um, her hair is dark brown. Her outfit is orange. And if you say the word jinkies around her, you, you can't. But if you do, she's like, if they put glasses on her, she'd totally be Velma. <laughs> I see it. I, can I mean, see that, it. that's what I'm thinking here. Maybe. Maybe. I can buy it. The hairstyle isn't right. No, the hairstyle is not right, but the the path of adventure and the, uh -huh. the color, it's got to put that in mind. Okay, I can buy it. I'm I totally going to ask to, I have to find out now. And I will come meet you on the other side. Okay. Because oh, I can't I'm... do it, I've already done that quest, so I can't do it again. I may have gotten turned around. No, you didn't. Okay. I'm walking right alongside the maze. These trees are enormous. Oh. oh, there you are. Leafy feet to the rescue. Okay. Okay, all right. Hey, wait, I've just come out the other side. Uh-huh. Oh. Okay. So, um, Marigold's going to be disappointed, I suppose, as that wasn't, uh, super interesting after all, Marigold. Or is it? Hmm. Our and friend magical... Jill Boswell wonders if it's Pippi Longstocking. And magical, right, the hair... Style is more like Pippi Longstocking, but the braids aren't long enough. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. That must not be an ordinary fog after all, but a magical and mysterious mist. Okay. You will do some thinking and see if you can come up with some means of countering this curious canopy of cloud. Oh, now she's alliterating. Okay. For now, I should return to Bingo and tell him that you're having a great time. Okay. All right. Um, hmm. That was suspiciously uneventful. All right, bingo. I have to give props to this lady uh, hobbit from the Fog Hollow Mushroom Society who managed to snag the name Orchid for her character. Orchid. Oh, that's pretty cool. A properly hobbity name. It is. Okay, let's see. Uh, tell. All right, okay, so the girls are enjoying themselves, but the boys are not so far. You notice that too, huh? Yeah, okay. This cannot be the curse at work unless it is a curse that has chosen to mildly inconvenience a few hobbits. Okay. What do you think, Bingo? Perhaps you are making a great mountain from a shrew's burrow. But that apparition I saw in the Bind Bowl wood has you all aflutter. Okay. What is the curse of which it spoke? What if the curse of which it spoke is just around the corner? and waits to level its full effect upon the hobbits celebrating the Harvest Festival. Oh, man. Do I think I might speak with Waterick Goldworthy in front of the maze and ask him if he encountered any difficulties? Okay. All right. Let us see what we can find here. Okay, not that way. It was over this way. Okay, there he is. Waterick Goldworthy. If I'm here to complain, you don't want to hear it. No worries. There's no complaining on this stream. 
I have listened to more than my share of grumbles today, and my temper is at its lowest ebb. <laughs> um, okay, it was quite a lot of work, so I'm pleased there are some who have enjoyed the games here. You put together a team from Hobbiton and from Bywater, and for the better part of a fortnight, we worked to clear the field of stones and stumps. We had to move a few fences. Hobbits might once have lived among the trees here. Because we also moved one or two low walls that could have belonged to hobbit homes. What? You just, like, wasted archaeological sites like that? Think what we could have reconstructed from those ruins, man. Man, Wallerick Goldworthy. Dismantler of ruins. Oh, man. Uh, take a look at the junk pile where we moved everything. Okay. It's going to be harder to reconstruct it. What are you wearing? Oh, a natty little suit. Okay, I see. Um, uh, all right. Um, so wait, where is it? Follow your friendly hunter friend. Yeah, it's harder for you to follow me because you're used to Kiriana. Yes. Fortunately, I have the uh, green floaty name to guide me. Okay. All right. Ooh, so... Hang on. They left some of the walls intact. Okay. Sure, yeah, that wooden sign looks interesting, but... Okay, this is not a wall. This is a... This looks like a rough, piled stone wall such as, like, we have all over the place here in New England. Hmm, okay. Hard. In homage to old England. Yeah. Well, in homage to all the rocks they had to clear out of the fields when they first started cultivating anything around here. Um, had to do something with those rocks, so you might as well make them into fences for boundaries. It's funny how many uh, property lines in New Hampshire are still defined by the old stone walls built several hundred years ago. Okay, so we have this old stone wall, which, yes, it's about house-shaped, but again, there's no mortar or anything. This looks like a very rough pile. Like maybe it enclosed a yard, but then we've got these wooden... Can I climb? No, I can't climb. All right. These beams are very odd. I mean, look how huge they are, for one thing. Could hobbits even move those beams? I suppose. They're very resourceful. Is that furniture? Are those shelves? That's weird. All right, I'll look at the sign. Oh, somebody spray painted on the sign. No, they didn't actually spray paint. Okay, Cleary's Acres repainted to Erie Acres. All right. Cleary's Acres with the lovely little leaves up there at the top. <laughs> right. Now I got that. All right. Let us report this to Bingo, <clears throat> confirming his greatest fears. Wait, where did it go? Over here, right? Yeah. Okay. I still love the music in here. It is so eerie and creepy. I think I have my music too far down. Hang on, let me turn it up. Yeah, Darth Celtics, uh, a.k.a. Bill Champagne, a.k.a. Lead Community, or not community quality assurance dude qa this is what he does in his spare time it's a little better Hang on. so he took the happy fun tom bombadil theme and turned it into this creepy thing it's amazing cool okay bingo OK, 
Okay, a sign for Queries Acres. That's right. This field may be called Wistmead now, but at some point in its history it must have been called Erie Acres. Well, that paint didn't look especially ancient. We have wandered right into the waiting jaws of the curse. <laughs> uh, cancel the celebrations at once. Oh, that's gonna, yeah, he's gonna be very happy to hear that. Okay, I'm getting the music now. All right. Yeah, you can hear the Tom Bombadil theme. Okay. <laughs> yeah. A malevolent force has declared that no one in the Shire will escape the curse of the Eerie Acres, and I found proof that Wistmead was once known by that name. Okay, the sign stood by the western path out of the clearing. It has not been thought of by anyone for a very long time. This whole place has been uninhabited for dozens of years at least. Dozens, I tell you. And no hobbits have called this place Eerie Acre since then. Okay. I will not shut down Wistmead. I will not cancel the Harvest Festival. <laughs> oh, it's all a plot by that bingo. Okay. Oh, man. Poor Bingo, trying to save everyone. It's like Cassandra in that way. Yeah. Maybe. It's interesting, though, and very much in keeping with the Lotro depiction of Hobbit culture, that uh, Goldworthy's assumption is that Bingo is just trying to cause trouble and spoil the fun of everybody else, right? Um, the fact that hobbits would play tricks like that, you know, and be mischievous in those ways, um, very typical. And I've always admired uh, Locho's depiction of hobbit culture in this way. Um, they are not perfect. Uh, they are, you know, often uh, venial and mischievous and misbehave in various minor ways. Okay. Yes, he refused to cancel the festival. Of course he did. That was completely useless. Okay, you saw Fosco and told him we should probably get ready to leave Wistmead. And he yelled at you and stamped his feet? And he raised his voice and put you right out of sorts? Oh, man. Uh-oh. Fosco Boffin is cursed? Oh, dear. The curse of the Eerie Acres is real, and it has affected some of the hobbits here already. Uh, not sure you're not leaping to conclusions there, Bingo, but we'll... Oh, wait, hang on. I thought I was supposed to talk to Fosco. No? Wait, what am I meant to do? Should, if you picked up the next one, we should talk to Will Woodfoot at Mickle Delving. Oh, okay. It did not automatically give me the next one. Um, so I was just assuming I was supposed to go talk to Fosco. Okay, uh, get to the bottom of the business. Okay. Okay, Cleary's Acres. All right, let's try to track Cleary down, huh? Consult with the mayor. Got it. Okay, we can do that. Hunter Port incoming. Okay. Yeah, Ethelot, I always assumed that the festivals would be phased post scouring the Shire. Or actually, you know, can you imagine how awesome it will be for ones that are faced, phased post scouring of the Shire? Like in the year 1420, right? With the Mauern tree? That would be awesome. Okay. I, I have a personal theory as to how they're going to do the scouring and post scouring. Yeah. Like what sort of quests you could do. Wouldn't it be amazing to help Sam revitalize the Shire? Oh, yeah. I mean, like... Like a hit bolt sort of thing? Uh, except less evil? Yeah. 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 
Yeah, like Hitbold but less evil. I could get behind that. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, no, I, I, I clearly helping Sam with his forestry work is obviously, um, and there should be some awesome titles attached to that, right? You'd think. I, I would hope so. I mean. That, how do you do? And I'm still thinking how they're going to actually manage the scouring itself because, of course, you'll obviously you'll correct me because you are the professional in this. Um, <laughs> that there were no nobody at the Battle of Bywather except hobbits and ruffians, therefore, nobody at no elves, no dwarves, it's just hobbits and humans. Yeah. And it's so that's got to be it. Yeah. So where, where's everybody else going to be during the scouring? Self farthing. Right? I That's mean, my personal theory. I see. So uh, folding that in with the... Uh... Well, see, I don't know, though. I, I have to... I mean, I'm with Maven. I'm with Maven. Session play. Session play? Yeah. But it's the Battle of Bywater. Uh-huh. Session playing the Battle of Bywater does seem... Playing the Cottons. Wouldn't that be cool? Oh, man. Yeah. I... Can we session play, like, as Nibs Cotton? That would be, <laughs> that would be <laughs> awesome. Great. I want to be Nibs. Um, yeah. Yeah, don't I, tell me the lions that. Yeah, I totally want to be nibs. So, um, no, the it is true that it's a conceptual problem. I mean, obviously, there's 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 nobody, you know, having elves and bjornings and things like that showing up at the scouring of the shire would be outside the primary story, and outside the primary story in a way that most of the rest of it isn't. I mean, you know, of course, most of the primary action on the epic quest line takes place sort of off screen or you know off on the periphery right um so the fact that there are these like player characters of random races tagging along with the main characters in the main action is um you know kind of unobtrusive but i mean one of the one of the patterns has been just kind of generally to sort of ignore that right i mean in the sense that i mean there were also there was also only one elf at the Battle of Helm's Deep, right? But that didn't stop them letting us go to Helm's Deep as elves if we chose to, you know? Um, so, I don't know. Um, oh, Sam wants a session play as the, uh, the no longer fatty Bulger. Well, the problem is he's only no longer fatty after he's been in the lock holes. Um, but I would think that the, um, you know, like, playing, uh, session playing the... The series of events in which, you know, Fatty Bulger is, you know, uh, 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 sharking up a group of lawless resolutes and, and taking on the ruffians and then eventually getting captured and thrown into the lock holes would certainly be a great sequence. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right. Hey, Maven. Maven's here. Cool. So, Maven, I wanted to answer your lore question, but I'm, I'm having a hard time getting to lore questions because there's so much text to read uh, and, and doing the bingo quest here. Um, but I wanted Blame to answer... Me. I wanted to answer your... Uh, you still need... Uh, you still want me to answer your question about uh, Eucatastrophe and uh, Deus Ex Machina? Because uh, I can do that. If you're here, I can, I can... I'll take a pause and do that because that's actually... I think it's a, it's, it's a really good question. Yeah? Yeah, you need that one? Okay. All right. Then I'll talk about that. Uh, actually, let me just pause here and talk about that for a second, because uh, this is a, this is a common kind of mistake, uh, or not mistake exactly, but confusion. Uh, in particular, I think that a lot of people uh, overuse or overapply the idea of Deus Ex Machina. Um, the concept of Deus Ex Machina, of course, the phrase which means like God from the machines, uh, is kind of a weird phrase, but of course, it's a very particular reference. Um, and it's a reference to the machinery, specifically the stage machinery uh, on uh, the 18th and 19th century English stage. Um, so the, the, the references to, I forget the, the name of the play where this sort of most famously happened, but there was this impulse among playwrights in that time to like, things have to come to a happy ending. Like there needs to be a happy ending. That was just kind of like a, you know, what they felt was like a mandate, um, you know, kind of like uh, modern Hollywood films feel like there has to be a love triangle in order for it to be effective. Right. So we have to, we must absolutely introduce a love triangle uh, because it's a thing you have to do. Similarly, um, just like we must come to a happy ending. So there would be this play that was going along uh, in like, very tragical lines, right? And everything looks like it's winding up towards tragedy. And then all of a sudden at the end, the playwright just like changes everything. 
right? And this happened literally uh, in this one famous instance. It ha- and I'm forgetting the name of the play now. Um, when uh, one of the one of the Greek gods just out of nowhere, like completely disconnected to everything else that's happening in the story, just descends uh, on pulleys onto the stage and sets everything right. Right. Just is just like, okay, um, you no longer feel the way that you do. And the problem that you're having is now completely dissolved. And now everyone can be happy ever after. And everyone's like, hooray, we're happily ever after. Um, It's not about. So, of course, a catastrophe is the sudden turn which does bring things right. Right, the eagles coming, uh, Aragorn, uh, you know, the, the the ships with black sails sailing up the uh, the river, which turns out to be filled with friends instead of filled with foes. Those are sudden turns which bring about an unexpected happy ending, but they are not. Deus ex machina is like discontinuous with the rest of the story. Like if, if, if it is a deus ex machina, it is simply like the author inventing in the spur of that moment, like, you know, bringing in a mechanism which has not entered the story at all before. So like, again, think, think of the two, those two examples, the two classic, you know, sort of biggest, most classic examples of catastrophe in Tolkien's work. Uh, the Eagles at the Battle of Five Armies and Aragorn in the ships of the Corsairs at the Battle of Pelennor Fields. The eagles are not a sudden mechanism, right? In fact, they are sort of, they've already been a catastrophe before, right? Them coming, like their interest in fighting the goblins was established earlier in the story. Their, uh, uh, the beginning of their relationship with the dwarves was already talked about. Their connection, indeed, to the end of the story and their ultimate friendship with the dwarves and being rewarded by the dwarves with collars of gold and things is actually referred to in the beginning of chapter seven, right? So, <clears throat> what happens with the eagles at the end, <clears throat> excuse me, of The Hobbit is very far from a like wild, crazy, just like pulled out of nowhere, uh, invented on the spur of the moment mechanism uh, for making uh, for making things turn out well. But again, another element of uh, another element of Deus Ex Machina is that it simply breaks. It's not only a sort of a desperate and last minute invention of some kind of bizarre mechanism to make everything turn out right. It also just sort of violates the dramatic action of the play. Of, of the story as well, right? Like things are moving along in this direction and then all of a sudden, whoop, we're just going to take a 90 degree turn because we feel like we should for some reason, right? That again, so th- the sudden turn, uh, you may remember that Tolkien, when he talks about catastrophe, he talks about like this particular sensation that's associated with it. And I remember the letter um, when he reflects uh, very uh, in, in a very pleased way that this is, was like in the 50s, I think, that he when he went back, uh, when he went back and uh, 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 read The Hobbit again, he hadn't, hadn't read The Hobbit in like 10 years and went back and reread The Hobbit uh, and said that he was pleased to find that the uh, the the you catastrophe when the eagle showed up uh, gave him that same kind of thrill uh, that you catastrophic moments in fairy tales had always done. So you know he was sort of really really pleased with that in retrospect. That kind of sensation that uh, it's again it's the opposite of sudden random intervention to make things work out. It's again it's almost the opposite of that. It's it's uh, it's deeply satisfying. Aragorn at the Battle of Pelennor Field is, to me, the the, the the greater, really the greatest example, I think, of catastrophe in Tolkien's writing. Um, it's not just, uh, it's not just a sudden unexpected thing, because of course it's not fully unexpected. Like we knew he was going to be coming. Um, we have, you know, his foretellings to Aemir. We know he's set off. We know what he's attempting to do. Right. We just don't yet know that it's going to be successful. And it's like the fulfillment of prophecy and the, even the prophecy that is main, that is, that is contained in the, in the title of the book, right? The return of the King, Um, you know, that the King should return in this moment, in this way, unforeseen and, and turn the tides of battle is again, very, very far from anything that was ever described by the phrase deus ex machina, it is deeply satisfying and, uh, and really a fulfillment of the story, taking it uh, to its, uh, its logical, natural, and, uh, and as I say, deeply satisfying conclusion, rather than 
just rerouting things uh, in a, uh, a sudden and, and kind of jarring way. Um, so, I mean, it's it's hard because, you know, you could say, well, the two of them are kind of similar, except one is good and one is bad. Right. One is well done and one is one is not well done. Um, but again, I don't uh, in a sense, I mean, that's a defensible distinction, I think, between the two of them. I mean, I think you could defend that. Um, I don't really buy that fully myself uh, because, again, I think that there's a there's a there's a different quality. It's not just that like both are trying to bring their story to a resolution. One is doing it well. One is doing it clumsily. Again, that's that's certainly there's no question that that is a true statement. Um, but again, I think there's it's it's more to it than that. Or 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 if the difference, or perhaps merely that the difference is so great between the two of them, um, that they uh, uh, that they are. Um, like different in kind uh, because the difference is so great. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so that's that's definitely yeah. So Maven, if you're thinking about the way that the that the PCs themselves are used in a U catastrophic way, yeah. Now, of course, it's interesting, uh, Maven, right? Because you could say, of course, that in relationship with the published Lord of the Rings story, the um, uh, the the player character's intervention is like a sort of a an unexpected mechanism brought in, right? But again, it's not alien to the story, like the random Greek god repelling down onto the stage, right? Um, in because of the way that the player characters have been so, I think, smoothly incorporated into the epic story from the very beginning, right? Um, it's not that they are foreign elements. It's not that they're foreign elements to the story. Um, they are instead, they are the invisible elements of the story made visible, right? Anytime we're told that something happens specifically, but we're not told who it is, it is often the player characters who are cast in that hitherto unnamed role, right? Um, when, and of course, sometimes they will perform tasks or do or, or take part in adventures, which we have no clue happened, uh, you know, which there are for, uh, to, for which there is no reference. But again, there are things that we, you can kind of infer. They still fit with it, right? They don't reroute it. They don't do anything really strange to it. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and now, Maeve and I agree. So in Standgard, uh, which of course is relevant, as Bingo, or Bingo has... <laughs> Not bingo. Griffel, it was just there. Um, it's true that the player's unexpected appearance turns Stanrick around. Um, but, of course, see, that I don't... I was going to say I don't mind. There's more scope for the players to have that kind of an impact on places. Uh, because, of course, it doesn't impact the direct story, like it doesn't impact the quest of the Fellowship of the Ring at all, right? Um, and the role, if it has some role in um, the larger political uh, uh, situation, right, in Rohan, that impact is, it fits with it, right? It's able to be accommodated into the primary story, right? I, I, you know, again, as I was saying, when I was looking at the Stanrick and Sithric uh, plotline, just a couple of weeks back with Grifflet, there's, um, you know, it, it, it's the way that they're pursuing this is very logical. Like, how would, how exactly would Grima play his hand, right? What exactly would the other Thanes and Reeves around Rohan be thinking, right? How would they be responding uh, as Thane is being corrupted like this? Um, we see Aemir's response, but his is the only one we get, and his, of course, is a privileged one. He is not only... Um, it's not only that he's close to the king in lineage, right, and therefore is in a different authority relationship with Grima, right, compared to the other uh, captains, but he's also physically close to Thaden. He can physically see what's going on. What are the people out in the distant, you know, what are the people in the Westfold going to know? What are people out in the Wold uh, going to know about what's going on back in Adarus? All they're getting are edicts from the king, which are edicts from the king as far as they can see, right? So anyway, um, it's uh, it's interesting to see how they handle that. But so given that we know there are going to be some very legitimate, you know, very defensible um, 
re- reactions, responses, right? Some in favor of, some questioning, a lot of doubt and uncertainty. The primary book doesn't really cover a lot of that, right? Because focusing just first on the Fellowship and then on Theoden after his return, right? Which, that's going to be you catastrophic from the standpoint of the rest of the people of Rohan, right? Um, I mean, all of those confused uh, thanes, right, are going to suddenly find Theoden not only suddenly acting like a good king again, um, but himself personally appearing and showing, like, we get that one glimpse of that uh, with uh, Kaoral, the messenger, right, who meets uh, them in the in, in the night and tells them to, uh, you know, to return to uh, to Edoras, and then Theoden calls him out, right? Um, so, uh, anyway, yeah, I, I, I do think that we can see lots of ways in which that works, but again, they have they have a lot more scope in Rohan. They have, just as they have even more scope uh, down in Gondor, right down in you know near Dol Amroth and out in Lamadon and the other places where uh, Wigan was exploring in the marathon a couple weeks ago. Um, because again, we we know we know nothing about what was we know little about what was going on in the rest of Rohan. We know even less about what was going on uh, in the rest of Gondor down there. So. Um, so again, it gives them more scope, and and therefore it's 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 not really. I think there can't really. I don't think there can really be a question of um, Deus ex machina exactly. I think it's it's it's. But we do see that you catastrophic pattern. I think, um, and certainly the ways in which um, uh, the ways in which the uh, the epic quest line often comes about is. Uh, uh, you, you catastrophe. And there I just see the storylines that they're creating as being designed to fit within the, uh, the overall sort of themes and shape of, uh, of the story of the Lord of the Rings. I mean, that, that you catastrophic pattern is a, a sort of a deep pattern, right, within the stories of Middle Earth. Uh, and I greatly respect them for uh, uh, both, you know, accurately perceiving and effectively depicting uh, that theme in the stories that they make uh, for the player characters. I think that's very cool. Okay. Um, good. All right. Um, so, yeah, sorry. So, Maven, I was totally, that was going to be the first question I was going to answer today if I got a chance, and I kept looking for a chance, and I was not getting a chance. So, uh, we, uh, we, we now conclude this interruption of our investigation into the Erie Acres, uh, and we return uh, to the uh, Erie Acres here. Um, yeah. Yes, Maven is doing her master's thesis on the Lotro storylines, especially in Rohan, which I think is pretty awesome. No problem, Maven. Oh, I want to read that. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's going to be good. Um, uh, we'll make sure. So, all of our uh, uh, all of our MA students, when they finish their um, uh, when they finish their theses, they do a. It's not a, not a thesis defense. It's like a, a presentation. They do a they do a symposium um, where they talk with their advisor about their uh, about their their thesis. Uh, so we'll definitely uh, let you guys know when uh, when Maven's thesis symposium is going to be. It's going to be. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun to talk about. Okay. Anyway, all right, so, but here I am, talking to Will Whitfoot, the mayor. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see, yes, Waller Goldworthy has really outdone himself, Flower Dumpling. That is true. Outdone himself is exactly what he's done. Okay. Okay, you can't remember any hobbit named Cleary, huh? When did I say this Cleary lived in the Shire? An old resident. Look in the Matham house, huh? I've given more than enough thought to this matter. <laughs> okay. I like that. I should, I think, uh, I, I think I'm going to remember to use that. I've given more than enough thought to this matter. <laughs> and if you don't consider it resolved, that's your problem. It didn't involve presiding at a banquet, so he doesn't care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking of uh, all the opportunities I would have to bring that expression out. Both as Tolkien professor and as Signum president. So many opportunities. 
I've given more Hello than enough thought to this matter. Let's talk about something else. Okay. I don't think I know of any hobbits by the name by that name in the Shire. But it does sound familiar. Okay. If I then saw Mathams labeled with the name Cleary. Hmm. Check with the postmaster. Ah. Oh, what a good suggestion. There's Postmaster Proudfoot. It's been a foul day, it has. I dare hope you seek the word of one Halson Cleary. I thought I would go to my grave with this task unfulfilled. <laughs> oh, so you have an undelivered letter? Oh, that's great. When I first came to work at delivering the mail, when I was just a young hobbit, old Ned Harfoot, the postmaster, showed me the ropes. It took me a few weeks to learn the ins and outs of the quick post, and I never forgot his lessons. One day, he took me down to the basement and showed me an old, a box of old envelopes. These letters ain't ever been delivered, Hugo, he said to me, but my old boss told me we weren't to throw them away. Could be one day we'll find out how to deliver them, and when that day comes, the quick post will truly have earned a fine reputation. Even if it puts the lie to its name. Yes, exactly. Okay, Ned passed on, and I took a vow to keep those undelivered letters safe. Might be the closest person we're likely to get to Halson Cleary. Okay. Oh, this is lovely. We get to go to the... Is he going to take us to the archives of the... Oh, wait, we have to, we have to decouple here, I think, for the... No, I shouldn't have to. Yeah, I just... I think it just told me to... No? Okay. No, just hit travel now. Okay. See, there you are. Hmm. It gave me a weird message. Okay. Yeah, it's a weirdo. Let's see. Inside the post office. Can I go down there? There goes the rest of the show chat. <laughs> uh, I, I can't get down there, though. Oh, oh yes, I can. Yee-hee! Okay. There is an Easter egg in here that Nettlebrew told me about. Why is the numinous backwards? That's the Easter egg. I'll tell you how to get there once we get there. Huh. Hey, I should probably talk to him. Okay, Postmaster. Empty the box of old letters onto the table in the basement. Okay. We don't advocate looking through people's mails. Okay, right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. These chests and boxes are wonderful. Parcels. I can't read the letters post pinned to the wall. It's all the same letter, every single one. Yeah, it's just noticing that. Okay, there's the right way round map of debris. I do like the blue boxes. Yeah, the blue boxes are, are very nice. What's that? It's a gazebo. Is this an Oregon picture? It looks like a Oregon. Interesting. <laughs> an old task board. Okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, 
Uh, oh. Dear Mr. Cleary, I hope I'm not intruding, but I wish to write you this note of thanks. Okay. I had a delightful visit with you, and I'm already looking forward to hours of next week. Hmm. As I promised, I'll bring some fresh produce from my father's garden. You will not believe the crunch of our carrots. Okay, this is high impact. Okay, when next I visit, I'll help you to clean the weeds out of your own garden. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but I find gardening to be very rewarding. Okay, very sincerely yours. Here it comes. Ivy Redsmith. Hmm. Okay, now don't click on the next letter. We want to go back upstairs to the painting, the reverse painting. And right click on the postmaster. I suppose I should come down here more often, but then I might feel compelled to tidy up the place. Just a little bit of favor club, uh, text. <laughs> Many okay. thanks to Nettlebrook for telling us about that one. All right. Ivy again. Okay. Dear Mr. Cleary, another lovely visit. Oh, oh, we're walking. Hope you don't feel too badly about what your neighbors have been saying. Or how about how horrible his gardening is? They seem a poor lot mean spirited and unwelcoming. Hmm. Pay no heed to their insults, and I will not either. Oh, they're insulting the two of you. Hmm. What kind of scurrilous and scandalous things are they saying about poor Ivy and Mr. Cleary? Who are just involved in some innocent gardening together. Let's see. Okay. Dear Mr. Cleary. This winter has been very bad, hasn't it? I'm sorry to tell you, the weather must keep me at home. I cannot visit this week. Oh, dear. We're spiraling towards tragedy. I promise to bring some soap and towels to scrub away the mean things your neighbors wrote on your fence. Oh, man, things are degenerating. Warm regards, even in the cold. Ivy Redsmith. Hmm. Okay, dear Mr. Cleary, it's a whole series of letters. I thought it was only one. Has it already been two months? Two months since what? You last visited? Whoa. Oh, it's the fell winter! Bing, 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 bing. Oh, no. Oh, dear. You've not been able to visit. Oh, no. I hope the wolves aren't going to come. Your family's worries deepen every day, I bet. Yeah, oh. I'll see you as soon as the winter ends. Oh, dear. Maybe Gandalf's going to come. Waiting to see the sun again. Ivy Redsmith. Okay. All right, let's see. Boy, I did not expect a whole series of letters. This is great. Where is she? Where, oh, there you go. Okay. This terrible winter might soon be done, though they have said this before. I hope this time they are right, for it has taken its toll on my family and my friends. I hope Mr. Cleary isn't killed by wolves. I have a terrible feeling about this. Our food is nearly gone, and they say it will be a time of famine unless something can be done. Oh, man. Oh, 
Oh, she calls him by his first name. Oh, dear. Your home is in no state to weather such a winter as we have had. Oh, no. You hope your neighbors at last showed you kindness. Yeah, that seems likely. Could they have given you shelter, shared their food, and found warmth in their hearts for you? Uh... They would be cruel hobbits indeed if they have not. Are my letters being delivered? An ominous question. In a pile of undelivered letters. You could not possibly have stayed in your home this whole time. <laughs> oh no. Worried, hungry, and afraid for you. Your dear friend, Ivy Redsmith. Yeah, uh, I'm also wanting to turn down the music reading these letters. Okay. Oh, there you are. Oh, that's the end of them? Oh, man. His letters are indeed very old. Yes, the long winter, which gripped the Shire more than 250 years ago, the longest ever recorded and followed by the days of dearth, a period of famine and unhappiness. It is said that many hobbits died during that winter and the food shortage that followed. I hope that fate did not befall Ivy or Halson, but if there are no further letters, it seems likely they came to sad ends. I wonder why these letters were never delivered. The hobbits of the Quick Post must have had their hands full just trying to survive the long winter. But still, I would expect them to make an effort, at least before it became clear the winter was worse than usual. Agreed. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing about the earlier letters. Why were they not delivered? Very interesting. Okay. There's nothing else to do in here, right? We're good? Okay. How rude! <laughs> it is highly unusual for a letter such as these not to have been delivered. We run a respectable post. Those undelivered letters seem to cast some doubt on it, to my shame and that of my predecessors. Okay. We do not keep records of home ownership at the Quick Post. There is a small chance that someone might know that the state know the state of the Query farmhouse, even if knowledge of its one time resident has been lost. Clem Underhill, the escrow broker. Oh, excellent. Okay. Let's talk to the escrow broker and check the real estate records. Just a moment. Okay. Almost 300 years. The records from those days are rather incomplete, but there is a deed for a parcel of land in that name. It is a wooded lot. I have no cause to go out there. I've had no cause to go out there, but the description makes it sound quite deep into the forest, near Wallerick Goldworthy's new cleared field of Wistmead, isn't it? An interesting coincidence, since the field has only recently been put to use after being left alone for so long. There have been no recent, no transactions relating to that parcel, so I expect if it was owned by a Cleary once, then it must be owned by a Cleary still. A descendant, surely? Though that is a long time for anyone to stay in one place without interacting with his neighbors. Certainly true. That is no way to live, not for any respectable hobbit. It must do you some harm, surely, to see only the faces of your, fa oh, your family and no others. And if you live by yourself with no kin around you, why imagine it? And who would take care of you in your twilight days until finally your last day arrives and you meet it alone? This, of course, is another theme uh, in Tolkien's works, like anybody who goes off and lives by themselves, that's generally a bad sign. There's a, lots of bad correlations with that kind of behavior. Okay, mayhap it is just the time of year, but thinking about this sends a chill down your spine. I understand. 
Okay. Well, we've uncovered a great deal of information. So we've got to go back to uh, the party tree and then to Wistmead from there? Indeed. All right. Nettle Brew, I think that was my first conversation with an escrow broker. Ever. Back to Wistmead. Okay, right, and there's. Back to the appropriate music for this stream. Right. I'll turn the music back up. All right. Fosco yelled at me again, and this time he had the support of several of his brothers. Okay, the spectral vision I saw in the Bindbowl Wood must be related in some way to Halson Cleary, and somehow he managed to put a curse on the Shire. None but one will laugh when all is done. That must refer to the ghost of Halson Cleary, scorned and forgotten by his neighbors. In fact, that may very well be why the Boffin boys are so uncharacteristically angry. The ghostly haunt has affected them without their knowing, and the close proximity of Wistmead to the Cleary farm has inflamed their tempers. Okay. You gonna send me off to Marigold? None but one. If there is a specter haunting the Cleary farmhouse, I need to be prepared to weather some frightening apparitions. Oh, no, Dinitus. Okay. Dinitus isn't frightened of anything. Okay. He would disbelieve a ghost right to its face. Find Dinitus by the fire. Okay. All right. Okay, Dinitus. I don't fear nothing, I fear everything. Okay. Yeah, that was left over from last year's class, yeah. Right. Okay, so I need to pick up a torch. Okay. Okay. Brave the misty path. Okay, Marigold, I'm having another go. Oh, I can't enter the instance in a group. Okay. Oh, you're gonna have fun then. <laughs> okay. Uh, how am I gonna do for time? How, about how much time is left, do you think? Uh, it's at 2.30 now. It's no, gonna... but how much time is am I gonna need? Oh, <clears throat> probably about half an hour. Really? If you, well, maybe if you, okay, if you corey it, and yes, your name is now officially a verb, uh -huh. um, you'll take about half an hour. If if you focus, okay. I'll you'll be probably efficient. take about 15 minutes. Yeah, be efficient. Go I'll, for it. I'll be efficient. I'll be efficient because. Uh... This is the good butt. The okay. good, really good stuff. All right, dinner this. Bad idea, and I, I regret it already. Okay. He thinks I don't believe in ghosts. Okay. Don't worry about it. Dina does. All right, well, I'm trucking along. Oh, this is very eerie indeed. I did hear that sound. <laughs> You'll wait here. Kind of thought you might. 
I don't understand if they have a pulley system for their loft. Yeah, when I first saw it, I thought it looked like a farm, not a farmhouse. Yeah, it, lo it looks kind of like a barn, but I guess it depends on what they store up in the loft up there. No one rests now upon the side porch. I'm looking for any evidence of... graffiti or anything. The forest encroaches from the rear. Huge trees! That tree is not encroaching on anything. Good grief. I don't care how old this house is. That tree is older. I found a door to the cellar. A cellar door. Ha! A cellar door. Nothing good ever happens in a cellar. Am I remembering correctly? Isn't cellar door the phrase that Tolkien described as, like, intrinsically mellifluous? Or am I confusing that with something else? Pretty sure cellar door is an important phrase. I'm blanking on the details and possibly confusing it with C.S. Lewis. But I think I'm not. I the door to the, the door to the cellar is locked. Yeah. Likely about, I thought I was remembering that correctly. Cellar door is the important phrase there. Yeah. An intrinsically euphonious phrase. Um, thank you, Ethelot. Comes out with a quote. Very good. Okay. Interesting that the like garden plots back here are built up neatly like modern ones, but then over here we have this much cruder stone wall surrounding a garden plot, which is just exactly what I thought that old place back uh, in like the you know the rubbish tip was, but it then had the those wooden walls with those big beams that I didn't understand. Okay, anyway. Down through the euphonious, beautiful cellar door. And you've now entered the Locho version of Mr. Toad's Wild Ride from Disneyland. Uh huh. Okay, anvils and. Oh, mushrooms. I thought those were pumpkins, but they're mushrooms. Okay, Dinadis, what do you think? Why is there a big old round door in the basement? Look at the wall behind you. Ooh. Uh. Whoa. Okay. Uh, you want to pay attention to where Dinidus is looking, because he's always looking at something, okay. except he's going to miss a couple later on, but you're going to see those throughout most of the okay, event here. Okay, his green eyes. Longo Proudfoot trapped in his larder. Okay. All the scary stories being brought to life. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Big Ed Mustafa was very disappointed he couldn't fish. He can't fish in that pond. Right. I'll go down the cave. 
Oh, down the cave. You can get through there. Eyes? When he turns away, it'll change. Look behind you. Ah. <laughs> okay. New courage, huh? This is where he starts missing, like, everything. Okay. There's a glowing purple well. Is that from another story? Yeah. I can go in. Okay. So who's this? trying to remember which one of those stories it is it's, they're all one one of those stories yeah took take a look to the left yeah look at the distance Minas Tirith yeah whoa that was unexpected So, like, the story of the War of the Ring is itself now a scary story that's being dramatized? I guess. His picture of the Howling Gate. Yeah. Gates of Moria? <laughs> Giant shrew! Is that Bay of Forical? I Bay thought so. Yeah. It's like the unexplained crystals in uh, Wildermore. Mm hmm. Look at the map. Which map? The one in the bookcase. You might be able to see it very well because you're a hobbit, but I can see it pretty well. Oh, I see. Probably need to zoom in. It's Rohan, yeah? Yeah. Map of Rohan. Okay. Yeah. Look to your left again. Yeah. Is that the bag end door? Was Please that put like in mind of the. Uh, just the Twisted Temple, or Twisted Tunnel. Twisted Tunnel. Right, Rovanian map, nice. The new one. I it, new I one. like how they put the new maps in game like that. Yeah. Okay, back to Eregion. Not telling Gussie Moose about this section, no. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, all right, dinner this. <laughs> I'm sure all these stairs fit inside this farmhouse. Yeah, it did it's look a, a bit smaller from the outside. Clearly a TARDIS. Agree. Okay, we have to keep going. Here we are, the main event. Okay. You don't like this. Sudden gust of wind. Oh no! Is this a stage? Oh, oh there's. Uh oh. 
kind of like a great hall with the, the, the main table at the top. That's kind of weird for a hobbit house. It is. It's like this dais is this house in Cleary. Join you here, dinner just shunned by my neighbors, left alone. Left to die. Uh oh. Oh dear. When I did this quest I, I read his the the spirit stuff in the spooky voice is awesome. Yeah. Have all the boffins come? It's a boffin posse. Yeah. A posse of possum. Oh, the sleepy one didn't come. Okay. Something about the spirit story strikes me as quite suspicious. Okay. A number of scary stories to celebrate the season. And that is simply not how otherworldly spirits behave. Uh what which what of his behaviors are you complaining about, Bingo? I'm a little suspicious that the stories that every, we were just telling are the things that are being manifested. Well read for one of the hole dwellers, which is not how a hobbit would speak. The skulking ire, and I speak for he who no longer can. Skulking ire. Halston Cleary died hated by his neighbors. They called him eerie and off-putting and strange. They mocked him. They insulted him. His rage and his hate drew me here. Hmm. He died in this very chair and no one wept for him. Yes, not true. Want to bingo bring the letters? Yep. You can do them all at once. Okay. All right, Griffo. So they're all going to read them out? Yep. <laughs> Enough! Hobbits died of hunger and cold, even among their friends and their families. Ivy Redsmith wanted to help House and Cleary, but the winter prevented it. <laughs> Grandiose gesture. Changes nothing! He was hated by his neighbors. Well... Yes. They whispered cruel things about him and they let, they let him die. That seems likely. His rage drew me here. Hmm. It's very interesting. This is where Bingo becomes Peter Falk.
Don't follow Bingo too closely. You want to see what's going on outside in the rest of the clan. Such spirits make the land more like themselves just by being there. That's right. Strike me as a barrow down sort of chap. I knew you'd appreciate that. <laughs> so. <laughs> I think you came here before you say you did. I love how he calls them hole dwellers. Hulbi clan. Yeah, bingo. It was your presence that caused Halson's neighbors to dislike him. Did you say your name was Skulking Ire? Yes. something was not quite right about Cleary's Acres. Hey, where are you going? But they didn't know what it was. It was you the whole time. All oh, right, I like how his his text, his floaty text changed, Phil. That's great. <laughs> Tell him that even when he felt most alone, there were still hobbits who cared. suspect you were to blame for his solitude. Yeah, you are the one who needs to leave. <laughs> Go, bingo. Take your curse with you. That was very interesting. Um, I figured you'd appreciate that. And that it had to be Griplet doing it. Yes. The skulking ire is defeated. He won't be bothering us anymore. I expect hobbits at Wistmead will no longer feel the effect of his presence. Okay. I wish we could have done more to help Hulse and Cleary. It is a sad story. We are much too late to help poor departed Mr. Cleary. I should like to make arrangements to bury him. I shall inquire with the mayor, and perhaps the quick post can be made to foot the bill. Had they delivered Ivy Redsmith's letters, some measure of pain might have been avoided. No, I will not judge postmasters long gone. Okay, I think Halson Cleary should, be bur should like to be buried in his garden. Excellent. <laughs> if only Celandine had been here to see my incredible bravery and courage. <laughs> I was frightened when we came to the forest and then again when we arrived at the spooky farmhouse and beside myself with terror. When you told me the door to the cellar was unlocked. But when it came right down to it, we, when we confronted the specter and so many of my brothers and sisters were beside me, things didn't seem quite as scary anymore. Now, of course, everybody sees how relevant this is to our recreation of the attack under Weathertop, right? 
They're working on exactly the same kind of spiritual principles that we've been talking about. The same, these are the same forces that drove the ringwraiths out of Buckland, right? When they were beaten off by the Bucklanders. Okay. You are ready to go. <laughs> What's the hold up? Nice. Awesome. Very cool. It's just a quick uh, finish so you can get your rewards of the uh, the festival tokens. Sure. Because the two right. bingo boffin quests give you 24 tokens each, so they're pretty good. Cool. We managed to dispel the curse and sent the skulking ire packing. We should strive to be kind to our neighbors in every season. Some of the spookiest stories I can think of come from our own failure to do that, this one included. Okay. <laughs> he wants to check out the spider pies. Woohoo! Hooray! Okay. There it is. Yeah, that was fun. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Well, oh, I had better run or I'm going to be super late to pick up my kids from school. So I'm going to say uh, goodbye, everybody. I will not be here next week because I will but be I will. on an airplane to Los Angeles for LA Moot. Uh, those of you who are in the Southern California area, come and join me at LA Moot. There's still time to register. Uh, go to lamoot.org or to signumuniversity.org and uh, click on the LA Moot event tile there and you can still register. Um, come and join me. Look forward to meeting some of you there. I think that uh, some, of, uh, some of our regulars are going to be there. So anyway, so I, will I won't be, be here. here next week. Druid's Fire will be seven for me again next week and I'll be back the week after that. I will be back on Friday, November 2nd. So I'm going to be doing then. the new Durance Day event uh, on my stream here in a few minutes. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, and I will see you guys uh, in two weeks. Bye now. Thanks for joining in on my rambles around Standing Stone's brilliant digital adaptation of Tolkien's world. If you enjoy these adventures, please consider supporting this and other entertaining educational programming by donating at signumuniversity.org fund.